It's a familiar sight, isn't it? Six times the winner. He has 66 yellow jerseys over those years, since 1999. He wants to go out on a high. The odds say he won't because all of the big winners of the Tour have never done this. They've always gone out being a flop in the last Tour. There's Cheryl Crow. And she is going to cheer him all the way. And there's the man who has always had his faith in Lance Armstrong. On the right there is Jim Okovic. I think everybody expects this man to turn the tour upside down yet again. He's on his way. He's on his way. He's pulled his foot out of the clip right at the start there. That will lose him a couple of seconds. And that might just ruffle his feathers a little bit. That was a quick start by Armstrong. Looks down there to see and make sure that it's OK. Gets into the aerodynamic position. But that was a rather bizarre thing to happen to Armstrong. Let's have a look at it one more time. Just as he accelerates away, pulls out his foot. Fortunately, that's at the start. He would have lost one or two seconds there. Well, as we go back down to have a look here at Lance Armstrong, but the Americans are having a fabulous day of racing because currently they're occupying first and third place on day one. Well, America once never took part in cycle racing, but now they seem to be dominating at this particular cycle race. There's the crowds, and they're all straining forward now to catch a glimpse of Lance Armstrong, the only man who's won the Tour de France six times. In his history, he's won 21 stages of the Tour, and 10 of them have been alone against the watch. And you will note that he's actually not wearing the yellow jersey, which a few years ago, the, man, the last man to start, the winner of the previous season, always used to wear the yellow jersey. Armstrong only wants to wear the yellow jersey when he actually feels that he's earned it. We've got a chance here just to look at both riders is the comparison between the two men at the top of the sport. On the left, Lance Armstrong wearing number one. On the right, Jan Ulrich. And look at the difference in cadence. The Ulrich uses a monster gear, a huge gear. He is a powerhouse of a man, where on the other hand, Armstrong is very supple. Pedals at around about 100 RPM. That strange little nervous move that he's had every time I've seen him ride a time trial. He puts his hand round to the back of his shorts just to pull them tightly to make sure he's as aerodynamic as possible. Well, there he is, the big man, his pedalling style is so different to Lance Armstrong. He just pounds that big gear. He's going over the only undulation on the course. You climb up to the dizzy heights. Right in the distance there is the famous Passage du Gois. It's covered by water just now, but that was where Alex Zula lost his Tour de France when he fell off back in 1999. He still finished second to Lance. Phil, I thought you told me the French had said there weren't any crowds out on the race today. <laughs> well, they've moved around a bit. But uh, you're quite right, they, they can't get over onto the island. This is the only entrance to the island, and the roads have been closed since 9 o'clock this morning. It's now coming up local time to 10 minutes to 7. So you haven't been able to get onto the island at all, or indeed off it, uh, since 9 o'clock this morning. We're looking now at the face of Lance Armstrong. Already he will know how his body feels, just how he's going, whether it's going good for him. He will not be chasing the time of uh, Zabriski. Now, one minute behind Ivan Basso is the powerhouse, the man who already has won himself a time trial this year in the Tour of Switzerland, Jan Ulrich, five times second in this great event, and this year hoping to date one of the most famous scalps in the sport. He wants to beat Lance Armstrong if he can before he retires, because he said that would add so much more to a victory if he could beat the man who is the record holder. Armstrong has gone through three seconds slower than Zabriski in second. Well, uh, we were talking to his coach just before the start of the event, and he said, I think Armstrong is going to win the Tour de France this year by his biggest ever margin. He is almost equal the time of Dave Zabriski at 9.6 kilometers, six kilometers covered, and that, you see, is a an unbelievable performance just three seconds off for Armstrong he's now got himself right into the times to win this stage well there's still 10 kilometers to ride of course but Zabriskie now will be quaking he may see his dream beaten by the man who's broken many people's dreams over the last seven years of the Tour de France Lance Armstrong just three seconds off and that was despite pulling his foot off the pedal which could well have cost him that three seconds it could have cost him that one to three seconds but he didn't seem to panic at all he got his foot back in very quickly he looks here to be riding with absolute power but look at that machine he's invested a lot of time and money into that machine phil it's probably the most aerodynamic bike you could actually buy on the open market well you know he's always delivered the goods when the chips are down he knows the time is a brisky because it's been standing for so long today but Tero is continuing to carry on 
former World Time Trial champion, just 21st. Phil, if you look at those time gaps, Armstrong was pulled back around about 40 seconds on the man wearing the pink jersey here, Jan Ulrich. If we could pull back, I don't well, think we would have to look back very far to see, and that's what we're going to do just now, the position of Lance Armstrong. There's the police motorbikes clearing the way for Armstrong. There is Armstrong. That's not very much more than 10 seconds separating the two men. It's decision time already, and we've only done 10 kilometers in the Tour de France, but if they're losing this sort of time, what's uh, there is Jan Ulrich right in the distance. Armstrong has galloped across a gap of almost one minute, and he could be putting Jan Ulrich out of the Tour on day number one. This is unthinkable. Well, the big discussions, the banter, the exchange of remarks over the last couple of months, I want to beat him. Armstrong's very often rallied those with the sparring remarks of, I'm not too worried about Jan Ulrich, rendezvous in July. Today's the 2nd of July. Armstrong on the left-hand side. You can almost see the slowness creeping into the position of Jan Ulrich today, but at the moment, conceding probably two and a half minutes if he keeps this up to Lance Armstrong. This is the catch. This could be what Lance Armstrong needs to actually win the stage. He's had in front of him a carrot, like a carrot or a strawberry in front of a donkey. He's been looking to try and catch it. This, to me, is a little piece of cycling history because Armstrong is on the wheel there of Ulrich and he's blown by him. Oh, and he took one glance, Ulrich, and he's gone. Now the rules are you can't follow in the slipstream. Armstrong goes through best time at the check, 16.47, three seconds better than Zabriskie. At the same time, he catches uh, Jan Ulrich. That's what he wanted. He wanted to catch Jan Ulrich. That was the little piece of a recipe that he needed. He needed to get out there and make a statement on day one. But to go through the 15-kilometer time check, the time, 16 minutes and 47 seconds, he's overtaken Zabriskie. He's got a roundabout four kilometers to go to the finish now two and a half miles it should not take him at this speed phil very much more than four minutes and 20 oh, seconds well what does ulrich think right now he can't afford to let this man ride away from him the regulation stage you must have a 25 meter gap well i think we can say he's got that right now because i think armstrong is pulling away from him he's pulling away but ulrich will dig deep because ulrich is a proud man he's a former winner of the tour de france let's not forget back in 1997 he's a great bike rider he's a powerful man you do have to bear in the back of your mind that he had a very nasty crash yesterday, but he did get up to fight again. Armstrong in the blue and white jersey there of Team Discovery is now looking at the possibility of winning this opening stage. The time to beat is that of Dave Zabriskie, 20 minutes and 51 seconds. And Armstrong at the last check was three seconds up on Zabriskie. Well, he picked him up at just inside the three kilometers to go, Banner. That was two kilometers to go now. And uh, Ulrich is going to have to hold him in his sight. He's going to concede at least 62 seconds before we go out onto the open roads tomorrow. Armstrong has done what he said he would do and take time on day one. Paul, we just knew when we spoke to Lance in the Dauphiné Libre, we said it to each other, he didn't say it, he's got his best form of his life. He think, I think he has got the best form of his life, you know, he went through the 15-kilometre time check, 16.46, that was three seconds faster than Zavrisky, also faster than Alexander Vinokurov and his own teammate George Hincapi at that point was in fifth place. But yes, in the Dauphiné Libre, Phil, I think he was enjoying himself. He rode as a, just a training ride, he was prepared himself for the Tour de France. He didn't want to affect the outcome of the event, but he was never too far away from the leaders. Well, I don't know, but I don't think that uh, Jan Ulrich has ever been caught in a time trial before. Now he's been caught by Lance Armstrong and has passed him here. 17, it is confirmed at. Just coming in just behind him, you caught a glimpse there of Francisco Mancebo. So Basso did a pretty reasonable time there. He caught the man who started one minute in front of him, but the man who is now looking at trying to win this stage is Lance Armstrong, Phil, and he's in the final bend. Well, as he swings up towards the line, he's going to win. He's got about eight seconds to get to it, though. Zabriski at 20, 51. It's going to be close. 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. Zabriski's won the stage. Zabriski has won the stage. Armstrong finishes second. 20.53, can you believe that? Just inside of two seconds, Armstrong was behind Dave Zabriskie. Ulrich, by the way, for the record, came in in 12th place. Armstrong was so very close there, and I wonder how much the, the weather conditions affected that performance. But if you look at that man, Phil, I think we're looking at a man who is ready for the Tour de France, the attempt to try and win it for seven times in a row. That is a little piece of history.